Hello Year 6 and welcome to our geography lesson for today. Last week we started to learn more about the reasons for deforestation and you made your mind map and looked at all the different reasons that deforestation was happening for all of those different causes. Let's take a quick recap of those reasons now to remind you and start to think about the effects that this is having on the planet. Forests cover about 30% of the planet, and the ecosystems they create play an essential role in supporting life on Earth. But deforestation is clearing Earth's forests on a massive scale, and at the current rate of destruction, the world's rainforests could completely disappear within a hundred years. Why should we care about deforestation? Together, Forestry and agriculture are responsible for 24% of greenhouse gas emissions, making deforestation a significant contributor to climate change. Deforestation impacts the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere in two ways. First, when trees are felled, they release the carbon they are storing into the atmosphere. Second, Trees play a critical role in absorbing the greenhouse gases that fuel global warming. Fewer forests mean larger amounts of greenhouse gases entering the atmosphere and increase speed and severity of global warming. In addition to helping regulate the Earth's climate, forests provide habitats for over 80% of the plants and animals that live on land. But deforestation destroys these habitats, diminishing biodiversity. Some estimate that four to 6,000 rainforest species go extinct each year. This also affects the more than 2 billion people who rely on forests as sources of food and shelter. The biggest driver of deforestation is agriculture. Farmers chop down trees in order to plant crops like soybeans, palm trees, and cocoa, or to make room to raise livestock for beef. Logging operations, which provide the world's wood and paper products, also cut countless trees each year. Forests are also destroyed as a result of growing urban sprawl as land is developed for dwellings. The effects of deforestation are grave, but not irreversible. Today we are going to go to the next step and find out more about the different types of deforestation and the many effects that this has upon the planet. So let's get started. We're going to be focusing on how deforestation takes place, as this will start us thinking more about the problems that this may cause. As we look at each method of deforestation, we would like you to consider what effects you think this would have on the following things. Now this document is on the Google Drive for you to use and make your notes against each section. But as always, if you don't want to print this out, then you can divide your page into five sections with the headings on one side and make your notes next to each one. So let's take a look at the five areas that we're going to be looking at. The first is biodiversity of animals and plants. Now we already know that more than 25% of the Earth's plant and animal species live in the rainforests. So we're going to be thinking about what effects deforestation would have upon that area. Also on our note sheet that's on the drive. Indigenous people who live in the rainforest what effects would deforestation have upon them, their culture, their community and their way of life? Next, the water cycle. We already know that trees are vital to the water cycle as they soak up rainwater and transpire which returns the water back to the atmosphere to fall again as rain. How would deforestation interrupt the water cycle and what problems could this cause? Our next section that we're going to be looking at is the Earth's climate. This means how hot and dry the planet may become if the trees are removed. And we've got space for our notes next to this. And then lastly, soils and the nutrient cycle. We know that trees feed the soil. They give it nutrients as the fallen leaves decompose. And then those nutrients are then soaked back up by the plants to enable them to grow. That's the nutrient cycle. What problems would deforestation have and how would it interrupt this vital cycle? So for our lesson today, we want you to consider, can you think of any problems and effects that would be caused for each one of our focus areas by the removal of trees? Think about everything you've learnt so far and bring this knowledge to your notes and to your answer. 
All you need to do is put a few notes and ideas against each one or a few words just to summarise your thinking. So let's get started. It's important to know that there are two main ways of removing trees in the rainforests. The first is clear cutting. Clear cutting is a forestry practice in which most or all of the trees in an area are uniformly cut down. This method of clearing forests is used to get down the trees so that they can harvest them as wood, to make way for roads and buildings or to create space for cattle farms. Clear cutting happens in the rainforest both by hand and using the type of heavy machinery that we're going to have a look at in our video clip in a moment. This wide scale removal of trees leaves rainforests looking like this. Let's take a look. And as we look, what effects do you think this type of deforestation would have upon the five different areas or people that we're studying today? seen clear cutting in action, go back to your notes page. What problems do you think this would cause for animals, for example? What problems would it cause for the indigenous people? Take a few moments to put your first ideas down on your page now and pause the video while you do this part. Now we're ready to learn about another method of deforestation. The second main type of deforestation is called slash and burn. Slash and burn is a practice used to create farmland for agriculture. The method begins by cutting down the trees and the woody plants in an area, and then the cut down vegetation is left to dry, usually right before the rainiest part of the year. Then this biomass is burned, which results in a nutrient rich layer of ash, which makes the soil fertile for a short time and removes the weeds and pest species that might be living there. But after about three to five years, the nutrients are lost, which means that the land is no longer any good for farming and very little will grow. This results in the farmers abandoning the plot that they've cleared and moving on to another area. Land that's been burnt in this way does not return to rainforest because it doesn't have the nutrients to grow plants and trees anymore. Let's take a look at slash and burn now. April and May are the hottest months of the year in Belize. It's a time when many farmers set fire to their land, a tradition that dates back to ancient times. It destroys biodiversity, it destroys the soil, it can destroy crops, it can destroy communities. Uh, it's just so destructive, it's not uh, the best way to um, practice agriculture. Known as slash and burn, the fires actually make the earth fertile for a short time because plant remains fall to the ground and mix with the otherwise barren soil. But the fires also release huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere.
We've come to Toledo in the south of Belize. The district is home to the indigenous Kichi Maya, who trace their roots back to the ancient Maya. They've kept many of their forefathers' traditions, including slash and burn agriculture. In the past, it was more sustainable because farmers only cultivated enough land to feed their families. My ancestors knew what it was to protect nature. They knew that. They were one with nature. But as commercialization of food comes into the picture, we start making money off food. So we sacrifice all of those things like nature and, and, and sustainability to make money. Gustavo Requena works for the non-profit organization Jacche. The NGO is working with local farmers to introduce methods that are more sustainable for our modern times. Another problem with the fires is that they often get out of control, like this one, which has spread to a neighboring field. Our goal would not be to eliminate fires completely because it is a part of the culture and a part of the tradition. What we would want is to put in place the best practices to ensure that we protect biodiversity and other farms because escape fires do also threaten other farms because when a fire escapes and you have no control over it, you can damage communities and people's lives. Now it's time to return to your notes page. What problems do you think could be caused by this method of removing trees? Take a few minutes to go through the five different areas that we're focusing on. What problems could slash and burn cause for animals and plants, for the tribe's people, and for the soil in an area? What damage could it do to the water cycle and to the Earth's climate? Pause the video and make a few notes. Now we're back together, I'm sure you've already thought of many of the effects that are caused by deforestation and made some good notes against each of our sections here. Next we're going to look at the problems in a little bit more depth. See if you can add to your notes in more detail as we go. There may well be a few more problems that you hadn't already thought of. So after each one, stop the video and add to your notes so that you can keep up as we go through each area. Right, let's learn firstly a little more about the effects upon soil. Erosion may well be a new word to us, so let's make sure we understand what this means. Soil erosion means the wearing away of soil. Now this can happen when soil is either washed away by rainwater or blown away by the wind. When trees are in place, they do the job of holding soil as their roots keep the soil tightly bound together. Trees also act as a barrier to the heavy tropical rainfall because they soak up the water and stop the flooding as they reduce the surface runoff. When trees are removed, there are no roots to do this job. This means that soil can be washed away into rivers and when a large amount of rain falls, there's nothing to stop it from pouring off the earth rapidly, which causes flash flooding and can even lead to landslides, which are really dangerous. Let's find out more about soil erosion now and make some notes as we go.
also, when trees are removed, we run the risk of large areas of land being turned into deserts. This process is called desertification. When trees are removed, there's nothing to provide nutrients to the soil, which means nothing can grow. Also, without trees, the water cycle is interrupted, and this means that there's less rain. Less rain leads to a drier and hotter climate. Let's find out more about desertification now. Soil is an immense hotbed of living organisms. It feeds us, and we all depend on it. Even though it covers the earth in a thin layer that is only a few dozen centimeters thick, it is the site of intense activity and home to an extremely rich ecosystem. Insects, worms, and the billions of bacteria that live in soil digest mineral, plant, and animal matter like a huge stomach. Then they convert this matter into the nutrients necessary for plant growth. These plants will in turn provide food for human beings and animals. But the fine layer around the earth is delicate. In dry and arid environments, it is particularly vulnerable. It can take 500 years for 2.5 centimeters of soil to form, but only a few years to destroy it. This is called desertification. Contrary to popular perception, desertification refers to land degradation resulting from climactic variations and human activities. It is not a natural process. It is the result of mankind's actions. Today, a third of land is threatened by desertification. Over centuries, we have developed hyper-productive farming methods to feed billions of people. We have turned infertile deserts into lush green plains. But this type of farming might also damage soil and could rather turn fertile plains into deserts. Because in arid areas, water shortages affect the soil. The balance is fragile and soil is vulnerable. Mankind's actions could lead to its slow degradation. The use of chemical fertilizers weakens the living organisms responsible for soil fertility. Regular plowing dries out and compacts soil. Deforestation and overgrazing strips soil of the vegetation cover that protects it from erosion. Without branches protecting it and roots supporting it, soil dries out and is carried away by wind and rain. Poorly managed irrigation systems may also increase soil salinity and make it infertile. Climate change, also caused by mankind, worsens these problems. This is why land covering 12 million hectares, equivalent to Bulgaria, is lost every year. Desertification does not only affect Africa. It affects arid areas at all latitudes and on all continents. China, India, the United States, Australia, 13 countries in Europe. In all, 110 countries are affected by soil degradation. In fact, desertification affects all mankind because soil exhaustion is reducing world food production. And as consumption and the population are on the increase, it becomes harder to feed billions of human beings. Every year, the equivalent of 20 million tons of cereal is lost through desertification. And yet, it is not irreversible. A possible solution is planting trees to anchor the soil, increase moisture levels, and slow down wind erosion, like in the north of China, where billions of trees have been planted to form another Great Wall. Africa has also started building its Great Green Wall, from Senegal to Djibouti. 
On a smaller scale, the construction of vegetation fences around crops also helps to anchor the soil. Another solution to preserve land is farming without plowing. Throughout the world, zero tillage farming is already yielding abundant crops on 95 million hectares of land. Farmers are the main players in the fight against desertification. Subsistence and commercial farmers are at the heart of a new green revolution, which combines the yields of modern farming with the preservation of the environment, and especially soil. Because another form of agriculture is possible. It is based on simple, inexpensive techniques that are adapted to the poorest populations. This is known as agroecology. According to the United Nations, agroecology would make it possible to double world food production. Fighting desertification means preserving soil and feeding the planet. Another issue to consider is that without trees to act as a barrier to heavy rainfall, rainwater is more likely to run off the land in huge quantities and cause flooding, washing soil with it as it goes. This is called landslides or mudslides, and it's really dangerous, especially since many people live in and around the rainforests of the world. Let's take a look at this news clip of a mudslide in Brazil to see the effects. Stranded in their sinking sanctuary for this woman and her dog, the odds of survival are stacked against them. A rope is thrown into the torrent of water, engulfing what's left of their home. Miraculously, it reaches them. With every ounce of human endeavor, she's pulled to the safety of a roof. Like everyone else, she's still to escape from the sea of water, which has now enveloped her community. Countless towns and villages are no more as the mudslides power down hillsides north of Rio. What's left in their path is a blur of devastation. Unrecognizable as the places where people have made their homes. But in this country of haves and have-nots, so many shanty towns were too flimsy to withstand nature's onslaught. This man says his house was simply swept from underneath him. A month's rainfall fell in just one day, swamping and redrawing the landscape. Residents say they were literally chased from their homes by the water and the mud. Not everyone got out in time. Brazil is used to mudslides, but this one's turned everything upside down. It will take years for these places to get back to normal, if at all. So what effect will deforestation have upon the water cycle and our Earth's climate? Let's take a deeper look at these two interconnected areas now. But the problem is the rate at which we harvest them. Currently, humans are cutting down forests at a rate of 36 football fields per minute. Deforestation affects many ecosystem functions, but the question we're asking in this video is, how does this affect the climate? First off, let's talk about carbon cycling. Think about how you breathe. You breathe in oxygen, and you breathe out carbon dioxide. Plants and trees do the opposite. They absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen through a process called photosynthesis. When we cut down large amounts of trees, carbon dioxide is no longer absorbed and it stays in the atmosphere. This is a problem because carbon dioxide acts as a greenhouse gas. This means it acts like a greenhouse by absorbing and re-emitting radiation back down to Earth. We further contribute to this when we burn forest materials because the carbon stored in them is then released into the atmosphere. Greenhouse gases have a warming effect, and because large amounts are being released into the atmosphere all around the world, they are having a global warming effect. On the local scale, however, deforestation is having a different effect. First, let's talk about albedo. The albedo is the amount of light that is reflected off a surface. The main control of albedo is the surface's color. Picture a black car in the sun. Dark colors absorb most of the light, which is why black cars get so hot on a sunny day. White reflects light, which is why white cars don't heat up as much. The same is true with land. A dark surface, such as forest cover, will absorb light, 
while a bare surface, such as grass, will reflect more light. This causes a local cooling effect. Precipitation patterns are also affected by deforestation. When it rains, plants and trees absorb water. Through transpiration, plants lose water, which is evaporated into the atmosphere. Clouds form from the evaporated water, and when enough is collected, it begins to rain. The cycle then repeats itself. However, the cycle is disrupted when deforestation occurs. When it rains, there are no trees left to uptake the water, so most of the fallen rain collects and moves off the surface as runoff. This means that little water is left to be evaporated, which means there's a smaller contribution towards the formation of clouds and rain. Eventually, this degrades the environment because it's lacking the water that it needs. Deforestation has many negative impacts on the environment, but it can't be completely stopped because humans rely on it so heavily. So what can we do? One way to fix this problem is to change how we harvest trees. Instead of cutting down every single tree, we can selectively choose trees to cut and leave others to try and help maintain some of the ecosystem functions. Protecting and conserving ecologically sensitive areas is another way to decrease impacts of deforestation. By selectively choosing regions, we can conserve old growth forests and also protect endangered species habitats. Next, consider the effect upon biodiversity and how deforestation will cause us to lose many plants and animal species and threaten many with extinction. The Amazon rainforest, one of the most unique, diverse, and beautiful places on our planet. Its ecosystem alone provides nearly 20% of all breathable air on Earth and is home to more than 20 million different species of plants, insects, and animal life. But within the past year, there has been over 20,000 square miles of acres lost due to deforestation for logging companies and cattle ranching. This not only affects the environment, but the animals as well, forcing many species, such as the Amur leopard, to be placed on the critically endangered species list. And for some species, like the Glaucos macaw, their time has already ran out. If this continues at the current pace, by the year 2030, nearly 65% of the Amazon rainforest will be gone, and approximately 366 different species of animals will cease to exist. Lastly, we need to consider what effects deforestation has upon the indigenous people who make the rainforest their home. Not only do they lose their homes and have nowhere to go as areas are cleared, but the drier climate caused by removing trees actually causes forest fires as the hot sun beats down on dry land and starts fires that can't easily be put out. Consider the air pollution and danger to life this causes. Let's find out more now. Sem a floresta a gente não temos nada, a gente não somos nada. É a floresta que é nossa mãe, nossa casa, nosso lar, né? Então, sem a floresta a gente não é nada. Sem a floresta não existe povos indígenas. global, temperatura do sol, da descontrolada de chuva, né? Então tudo isso vem também porque estão acabando com a natureza e isso quem controla tudo é a natureza, natureza, né? É, nós ficamos com medo, que nós não podia nem, como é, que, como é que podia apagar esse fogo, que a água que nós tinha, nós acabamos com tudo, atrás de apagar mais e o fogo não deu jeito. É muito importante a gente manter a nossa tradição, porque É que a gente tem o nosso conhecimento, né? O conhecimento a gente tem da nossa tradição, a nossa cultura. E é tão bonito, é tão bonito, eu me sinto orgulhoso de ser um indígena e também manter a minha tradição, né? Se não chega a conhecer, quem é que vai mostrar isso? Então, por esse motivo que esse centro aqui é para ser isso, a fortalecimento da cultura nosso, para o povo conhecer 
e continu, dar continuidade daqui para frente e já tem terra onde plantar. Agora nós estamos aqui no centro com a Caru e o Chibu. A gente compramos essa terra aqui para a gente ter direito. Todo mundo está vendo que queimou, né? Acabou com a floresta e a medicina que tem. Aqui já tiremos muitas várias medicinas, mas acabou com tudo, né? Aí isso que eu fico triste. Mas nessa hora, era 12h30, então o vento estava dando muito forte, jogava assim, um canto que ainda não tinha pegado, né? Pegava faz de fogo, jogava mais para adiante, aí como não teve jeito, e queimou essa área aqui, 5 hectares que nós compramos, queimou. É, ninguém sabe como foi que pegou fogo essa chácara, mas só que pegou fogo. Eu sei que foi alguma pessoa que queimou. Foi alguma pessoa, porque se por ela não, vai, não ia queimar. Foi uma, alguma pessoa que, que olho, olhos grandes, né, com inveja, e tocou fogo para destruir, para fazer mal a nós. Terra é para todos, não é só para mim, não é só para aquela pessoa, é para nós todos viver em cima dessa terra. This, uh, this session on uh, climate and biodiversity with a lot of topics uh, to be obviously to be discussed. Mesmo assim, quando nós morre, nós não vamos levar nada. Vamos levar nada. É, Amazônia não. Eu vou trabalhar que vou suar para ver a floresta subindo de novo, não que ver a floresta sendo destruída, mas sim reflorestando de novo. Segue firme, só na frente, que a luta não é só do povo indígena, mas sim também da humanidade. Essa batalha só não é nossa, mas sim também da humanidade. Now it's time to reflect back on what we've heard and add to your notes. Here are my notes that I've made in no particular order. You can use these to add to your notes. Which section do they belong to? Take some time to complete your notes now and you can use this page to help you. Pause the video on this slide so that you can read them through and rewind the video if you'd like to go back to any of the clips that we've seen while you are thinking. You're going to take the rest of the geography lesson learning time today to complete and present your notes. And as you think about what effects and problems there are as a result of deforestation, Add your detail to your notes here on your page. That's it for our lesson today. I'm looking forward to seeing you all next week in school when we're going to be thinking about some of the solutions to the problems that we've learned about over the last two lessons. Well done for your learning today, Year 6. See you soon.